Let's move on to our second Matplotlib field. Plotting Curiosity's progress on a map of the Martin surface. I begin as usual by importing all the packages that we will use in this video. We need to find out the position of the rover as a functional Martin day. A little digging shows that NASA publishes such a database. It is XML though, a somewhat pedantic, extensible markup language and it is a long file. Let's look at the beginning. Simple enough, it is a sequence of location elements each describing a site providing a starting and ending cell as well as a latitude and longitude. Luckily, Beautiful SOAP can handle XML just as well as HTML. We just need to specify a different parser. We feed a file object open for reading to Beautiful SOAP and we specify the LXML slash XML parser. Next, we can get all locations. There are 14,000 of them. We collect the site coordinates in a dictionary indexed by the site, so we don't have to worry about duplicates. What's the appropriate kind of dictionary? Of course, an order date. So we look over the locations. Remember, when an element contains only text in beautiful soap, we can use the string attribute to access it. And we use the building float to convert longitude and latitude streams into numbers. Let's have a look. There are only 60 sites. For plotting, a known pair array is better than a dictionary. Specifically, we turn to order dict into a known pair record array. So an array of longitudes and latitudes made from a dictionary iterator. And since known pair you disagree is a common name, I need to give those and specify the type of each field. Just doubles. Let's have a look. Very good. A full scale map of Mars in cylindrical project is available from NASA's Mars Global Survey. We open it with pillow. We make a basement map specifying the origin so that it matches the image and we show the image on top of the map. Finally, we can plot Curiosity's trajectory with big red dots. Well, of course a small rover cannot move much so it looks like a little red dot. We can try zooming in so let me copy some code to do that. I have looked up these values in advance by the way. Here we can see Curiosity's path but the map does not have enough resolution to show anything else. We need a local map of Gale Crater, Curiosity's landing site. One such beautiful image, a huge composite woven from 205 individual shots were reproduced by NASA's Mars Odyssey Orbiter. So we load that with pillow. We need to give Methlolib M shell a few hints to display this image correctly. Its orientation where the two interpolate the fact that it is a gray scale. So we use a gray column now and the latitude, longitude extent of the image. Now we can plot the rover's path and we should also zoom in to just the crater. Much better. And if you want a close up, let me copy some code. We restrict our view on the map. Here is the detail. Curiosity spent most of its time on the edge of the crater and then started descending it. On a much smaller scale, it is very cool that we can make a beautiful visualization of such science data with only a few lines of Python and the right third party packages. The last package that I wish to discuss in this video is Flask, a leading web micro framework. With this password, the Flask authors suggest that their package realizes a minimalistic approach to implementing web applications, namely web servers that respond to structured queries. The package does not quite scale up to production servers that need to entertain heavy loads, but it is very good for prototyping. In this video, we make a simple Flask server that when given a margin date returns one of our stereographs taken on that date. We cannot run Flask within the Jupyter Notebook, but we use the Notebook to write out a separate petal script, and we run it from the shell. Let me import all the packages used in this video. As you can see, I have already started up a Python module with code to make stereographs, which I have taken from the last 
few videos. The Python magic file will write itself out to the file stero.py. So let's begin our server. The minimal flask application involves a bit of boilerplate. We create a flask server object which is traditionally named after the script that we are running. So underscore underscore name underscore underscore and we call the run method on the object. We will run it on the local network interface. We are not ready for the outside world. This works but it does not do anything. So we need to add the root. That is a URL or URL scheme that you recognize on your server into which we can reply. For this, we write a function that returns a flask response. HTML will do. Let's call it hello world. It will be a very simple page. And we decorate the function with the root that describes the URL. In this case, the minimal slash URL for this web server. But the point is that the syntax modifies the function so that Flask knows when to call it. So we drop out to our shell and try out the script. Flask informs us that it is running on port 5000. So that is where we direct our browser. Indeed, we obtain the response that we specified, but nothing else is available. For instance, no margin date. For that, we need to define another root which will take a variable argument, the soul, the margin date. So let me copy the code and start to modify it. The soul argument in the ape root template is mapped to the soul argument to the function below it. We need to make our HTML and then return it. Since this web page is going to be more complicated, we make it with a template. A template is basically a full description of a page minus a few variables that we can replace at runtime. Flask uses Jinja2 template which supports not only variable substitution but also control flow statements. We don't need those here though so we write our template. Even this will be very simple, a single image. And we will take care of replacing the image source at runtime. The double brace syntax tells Jinja2 where it should replace a variable. That is done when the template is rendered. So we need the image. We could write a stereograph to a file and link it. But uh, I am going to use a trick to insert the image in line. This involves encoding the image's text with a base64 encoding. So we will write a function that takes a pillow image, writes it to a contiguous memory buffer and encodes that using the base64 module. We also need to import the Jinja2. This may be the most technical function that we write in this entire course. We also need to inform the image element that it is getting an inline image encoded as base64. Let me demonstrate base64 encoding. We open an image from a previous video. Anyone will do. And we run it through our make image data function. In this case, the image is encoded as 700,000 characters. We can see the first thousand. This is a printable representation of a binary file that can be included in an HTML page. So we are almost here. We just need to procure the image using our code from the last few videos. So let me copy the server files again, import my stereo module and call it within get so. Get there returns an iterator, so we call it just once with its next method. And then we call stereo.getImage and stereo.blend. And let's not forget to actually call the makeImageData function and to render the template. Let's try this out. I will stop the server that was running previously and run it again in its updated incarnation. Okay, we get so 1360 now yes 1361 sure that's the joy of flask it represents a very high level abstract view of the business of responding to web queries but like the request package there is also a lot of depth to it and it can take you very far for your challenge i'm asking you to write a flask server application that returns a map of gal Crater showing curiosity's position on the soul requested by the user. You should be able 
to merge code from the Tronio maps and serving web page videos to write your server. Two hints. To find the position on a day, you can go through locations.xml using beautiful soap and find the first location where the requested soul is included between the start and end soul for that location. To convert a matplotlib plot to base64, you can first write it to a bytes o object using matplotlib save fake. Let's go through my solution. It consists of two files, the python module marsmap.py and the python script server.py. Marsmap.py follows the path that we traced in the plotting of maps video. It passes the xml file locations.xml. It obtains a list of location elements. In the function find curiosity, we look through the locations until we find one where the time spent all includes the requested soul and will return longitude and latitude. Then we load the gale crater image and create the map. Notice that locations.xml and the big image are loaded only once when the module is first imported. In the function plot curiosity, we first plot the image on the map, then a red dot for curiosity and we save the resulting image as a PNG file into bytes. Pi is almost identical to the server that we wrote to show stylographs, except that it calls Mars map functions find curiosity to determine the code in itself over on a given day. 